Hey now everybody, Jamie here, and today I'm gonna talk about some games that I'm so proud that I have in my collection. I'm looking into the future. 50 years from now, our kids or our nieces and nephews are gonna be rummaging around in our closet. They're gonna find these games. They're gonna open them up, and they're gonna remember their childhood and when you played these games with them. And maybe when they get old, they're gonna pass them along to their kids or their nieces and nephews. So today I'm gonna be talking about five heirloom quality board games from my collection. Let's do it. Cathedral. So my first game on the list here is actually a fairly old one. It was first designed and published back in 1979. The designer of this game, Bob Moore, was a pilot in the Royal New Zealand Air Force, and he was stationed at an airbase in Christchurch. So according to Bob, he used to fly over the city quite a bit, and he would always use the cathedral as a waypoint, sort of, when doing his turning maneuvers and things while flying. And he said he always used to look down at the city and see all the interlocking buildings around this cathedral. And he said it reminded him of toys. They looked like toys from so high up. And years later, he got the idea to design a board game that was kind of like that, like these small buildings that interlocked around this cathedral. And that's what this game is. In this game, you start off by putting the cathedral down. And then each player takes turns placing buildings around that cathedral. And the game will end when either player can't place a piece onto the board. It's too full. And at that point, the player who covered the most grid spaces on the board will be the winner. And one of the big strategies of the game is that you're trying to wall off certain sections of the board with your pieces only or the outside walls. If you make a section that's completely walled off with your pieces, the opponent can't place in that section anymore. And another strategy aspect is that if you wall off a section and there's only one of the opponent's buildings within that area, they have to take it off the board at that point. So this is a really beautiful game. It's made of wood. It's got nice chunky blocks. The board is made of wood with neat walls and sort of spires on the corners. And there's a good bit of strategy in this game. This is a really well done spatial relations strategy game trying to wall off those sections so you have a big area to work with, you can place any of your pieces in it, while reducing the space that the other player has to place their buildings in. It's really, really well done, and it's a quick playing game as well. It's great for a lazy Sunday afternoon, sitting on the back porch, getting into a really casual but good strategy game. Cathedral, check this one out. Really, really fun game. Knockdown Barn. Now, this one is a real oddity in the world of heirloom board games. This one was designed by Greg Burhop, and every single copy of this game that's made is made from reclaimed wood from old barns, hence the name Knockdown Barns. What you do in this game is you put this big barrier in between the two players. And behind those screens, the players proceed to build a castle with these wooden blocks. And the game calls them barns. You're knocking down the barns, but they're like a castle. Then you remove the partition and you take turns flicking these little white marshmallow looking plastic things at the other person's castle trying to knock it down. So this is like a two-step game in a sense where it's a fun game where you're trying to build the castle and you're trying to build it in a way that would be difficult for the other player to knock it down, you know, like structurally sound. And then, of course, there is the attacking portion where you're just flicking those things. They're flying over. They're bouncing off the other castle. If it's really well built, they bounce off half the time and you have to keep banging on it until it just knocks over and explodes all over the table. It's just a fun, visceral experience. You get to build something cool, and then you get to destroy something cool. It's fun. It's not without its flaws, though, because first it comes in a burlap sack, and as you can tell, if you're shooting video with a burlap sack nearby, it gets all over the place. It's all over the front of my shirt. It's deceptively difficult to aim these marshmallows when you're flicking them. Uh, they just fly all over the place. They get all over the floor, and you have to go find them. You got to watch out knocking over Grandma's china with this stuff. And of course, like I said, in a burlap sack, ain't no way to store this thing. It's just kind of leaning up against a corner in my room here. All that said, though, I actually enjoy the game. I have a copy of it. It's just a fun little game to play every now and then. It's well done. It's cool that it's made from reclaimed wood from old barns. It's a neat game. Knock down barns. Puck it. Now, the next one on the list here is a frantic simultaneous play game in which you are trying to knock 
all of your pucks over into the opponent's side of the board. Now, the, you have this little wooden tray here with all these little wooden pucks in it. And you have a rubber band thing, an elastic band thing that spans the one side of the board. Now, you pull that thing back with a puck and you fire the puck across the board. And you're trying to get it through that little tiny hole on the other side. And you're trying to get all of your pucks onto your opponent's side of the board. Now, the rub comes that it is simultaneous and both players are shooting them at the same time. So they're flying through that hole. They're bouncing back at you. They're knocking things back and forth. And you have to do this as fast as possible. I wish I had another person with me here today to shoot this video because it would be really cool to see how frantic it actually is. And the frantic nature is what makes this game fun because the stress of playing this game simultaneously as fast as possible is what makes it good. Like you're seeing all these pucks come at you and there's a whole bunch more pucks on your side of the board than they're on the other side of the board. So you have to start speeding up. And when you speed up and you're all stressed out, you can't shoot straight. So things are flying all over the board, going wild. And if you keep your cool, you can win this game. But the game forces you to not keep your cool. It's a really fun game. I'm telling you, this is a party game like no other. You can play this game and go crazy and everybody's laughing and going wild. It's a really fun game. And the production quality of this is so well done. I mean, this board, this like tray board with the elastic band and all the wooden pucks, and it's just all very well done. It's a beautiful production, one that you wouldn't even mind having sit out all the time. It's just sitting on the table. And when you're ready to play a game, you play a couple of matches of it. They only take a couple of minutes and you have a blast. This one is really fun. Check it out. Puck it. Class. So this one, I wouldn't exactly call this one heirloom, but I think the game itself fits in with these other games very well. Uh, this one is from Denmark, and it was designed by Mikkel Bertelsen. Now, this one gives you vibes of air hockey. You have this little rink here with a, a ball and two strikers, and you have these magnets in the middle. The way the strikers work is, see, they're magnetized, right? And you, underneath, you place one piece on top and one piece on the bottom, and they magnetize together, and you can move them around from underneath the table. The goal of the game is to use your striker to knock the ball into the other player's hole. Simple enough, right? Well, there's actually some little extra things here that I think make it really special, and that would be these three magnets that are in the middle of the board. If you get too close to these magnets, they stick to your striker. If at any point you have two or more of the magnets sticking to your striker, you lose and the other player scores a point. So there's that extra added bit of the game. There's some strategy here in using the ball to knock those magnets over on the other player's side of the board so that they have a hard time staying away from them at that point. And then you can score that way too. This game is a very cleverly designed game. It's a really well done production. I love the fact that you're playing under the board and moving those little strikers around and the magnets make it a really neat aspect. This is another game that can get kind of frantic, ne not nearly as frantic as Pucket, but it can get there. Clask, it's a really neat game. You can get this one anywhere. You can get it at Target or anywhere. Check it out. I really like it, and I think you'll like it too, because it is fun. Crokinole. The last one we have on the list is by far the most classic and the most loved in the hobby gaming world. Obviously, it is Crokinole. Now, Crokinole was designed in Canada way back in 1876 in Ontario. The designer was Eckhart Vettlofer. And an interesting little piece of trivia about this game is it became extremely popular with Amish and Mennonite communities in Ontario because, and this is what all the sources I read say, the Amish and Mennonite communities would believe that playing cards and dancing were works of the devil, and Crokinole was not a work of the devil. Well, whether it's a work of the devil or not, Crokinole is fantastic. Now, Crokinole is basically similar to curling in a sense, where you're trying to flick these little discs onto the board and you're trying to get them into higher scoring zones. Similar to a dartboard, the outer layers are worth less points going all the way down to the middle, which is the bullseye gets you the most points. The first player flicks one of his discs into the middle. It has to get into that center area. On subsequent turns, players have to flick the disc and knock an opponent's disc away for it to be considered a legal move. 
So this is a game all about trick shots. You have to get good with flicking. There's multiple methods of flicking, and you're trying to knock your opponent's discs out. You're trying to knock multiple of their discs out while getting them into lower scoring zones while keeping yours into the higher scoring zones. Whereas those last few were very frantic games, this is a game of finesse and getting it just right. This is a serious game of skilled precision and trying to make sure that you hone your skills and get your fingers to work just right. And sometimes you flick and you bang your finger on the side of the thing and it hurts really bad, but that's a novice move. This game is just really well done and really fun to play. It's great at parties. It's great for a Sunday afternoon laziness, and it's fun for a game night. Anytime is a good time for Crokinole. So do yourself a favor and check out Crokinole. All right, gang, well, that was five heirloom quality board games for my collection. I love having these games. I'm proud to have them on the shelves, and I love to pull them out with people because they're just beautiful games, beautiful production. I hope you found something on the list that you might want to check out and play with your family as well. So until next time, have a good one, everybody. Thanks so much, everybody. If you've enjoyed this video, please do us a giant favor by subscribing to the channel and clicking that wacky bell icon. If you're into board games, miniatures games, role-playing games, we have a bunch of audio podcasts you might enjoy. You can find those at thesecretcabal.com or on iTunes and Stitcher.